Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we are back with our podcast, Courtesy on TV Studios. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with studio engineer, Arm Candy co host, Chris Gully. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. <laughs> here I am. Hi, Chris. All right. And welcome to Podcast 20. <sighs> they grow up so fast. <laughs> they do indeed. And I feel we're still on a high from last week mm -hmm. when we were in here and we were celebrating International Podcast Day. It was really something. <laughs> it was. Actually, we turned it into International Podcast Week. Uh -huh. Well, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things going on. And we have some enhancements to Barb's Tea Services podcast, mm -hmm. which we're going to share soon. Yes. And we also have something very awesome to talk about as far as new to Barb's Tea Service, and that is tea. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, but today I thought I would talk about something, not only tea, but tea serving ware. Mm -hmm. What we... What? Yeah. What, what we serve our tea in. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so, uh, and... This was inspired by a travel anniversary that uh -huh. we have yes. this week. Uh -huh. So, Chris, do you remember where we were almost to the day three years ago? Uh, someplace not home. <laughs> it, that's right. All it right. was not home. I got that right. All right. And actually, we were in Budapest, Hungary. Uh -huh. It was the final few days of our Blue Danube cruise. It was great. It really was. It was wonderful. And there's a lot of things to do in Budapest, mm -hmm. shop for paprika, mm -hmm. go to the museums. But I went to one of my favorite places, mm -hmm. Heron Porcelain. It was great. Oh, it was wonderful. So there's a lot of history associated with Heron Porcelain. I thought we'd, we'd focus on, in on that today. Uh -huh. And for those of you who have your BTS bingo cards, uh -oh. get ready. Okay. Because we're going to be talking about some of our favorite topics. Uh-huh. Royals, yes. Downton Abbey, uh oh, and more Royals. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and if we have time, we'll wrap up with a fashion etiquette tip. Okay. Because Chris, I know you are a fashion maven. This is true. <laughs> it is. But first, tea. All right, let's get that thing going here. Ah. Uh huh. So today we are sampling Earl Grey. Delight. Okay. And it's a delight in many yeah. reasons, mm -hmm. or for many reasons, okay. I should say. And this is a new to Barb's Tea Service currently. Yes. We have our own brand of tea. Amazing. And this is the Earl Grey. No surprise, when I was putting this together, I wanted to have at least one Earl Grey mix. Uh, of course. And although it's new on the scene now, mm -hmm. this isn't a new concept okay. for us. All right. Now, many of those who have followed us for a while know that we'll be celebrating our Emerald anniversary next well, year. How special is that? It really is. 2025, mm -hmm. it'll be 20 years of Barb's Tea Service. Wow. And when we started out, we were Barb's Tea Shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and at the time, we sold tea, and we sold actually our own brand of curd and jam. Yes. And it was very successful, yeah. but, and I'm going to show, for those of you who are watching, mm -hmm. this is, can you see that? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This is the brand that we had. Uh-huh. It was, this one was Strawberry Preserves. Uh-huh. Mm, with champagne. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as we grew more into the tea talks mm -hmm. and added to that, right. we kind of slowly drifted away from the retail business. Right. But now we're back in, yeah. and I'm excited to share that. Very good. So, Today we are Barb's Tea Service, mm -hmm. and we're back selling tea. So let's try a little bit of this. Let's do that. Yep, it's a uh, neural gray. It, it is with a little um, uh, with some notes of something additional. What what's in there? Okay, so in addition to the usual bergamot, yeah, we do have a just a little dash of lemon. Ah, there you go. Okay. Yep, yep. But I would say it's not overly pronounced. No, no, no. And so if that holds you back from Earl Grey, this is sort of a in-between, middle-of-the-road right. Earl Grey. Right, right, right. So, yeah. good. Very good. Okay. All right, excellent. Mm-hmm. All right, so 
Okay, we'll just keep going. <laughs> There's some stuff going yeah. on outside. Yeah. All right. So, Chris, you know I'm a fan of beautiful china and serving. Labor. You are. And, in fact, you were tuned into this early. I was. When uh, Before we were married, mm-hmm. our first Christmas, you presented me with a silver coffee and tea set. What a good boyfriend. You really, you were. <laughs> and, and husband, too. You oh. just kept it up. All right. So I just was, I loved it. And I used it. Uh-huh. I, so here I am. I'm 24 years old. Yep. I have an arm candy fiance. Wow. I'm a graduate student with a so-so job. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I've got a coffee and tea service. So when people come over, I would use yeah. it. I just the, loved it. Your life was complete. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> okay. Okay. We had a family to get to. All but, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so, you know, I, I love serving. I love a uh, good tablescape almost uh-huh. as much as what's inside. All it's right. delicious, right. hopefully. Very good. And uh, some of my favorites, I love Wedgwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been gifted Wedgwood by the family, the kids, right. over the years. In fact, when I left my corporate job, I was given a Wedgwood teapot. Yes. It was beautiful, and yep. I, I love that. Also, like Limoges. But since we are celebrating our anniversary of being in Hungary, mm-hmm. I thought, let's talk hair and porcelain. Nice. Okay. Okay. So as I mentioned, we spent, uh, we spent the last few days of our Blue Danube cruise right. in Budapest and our cruise director, Benny, mm-hmm. who is wonderful. Yep. She advised us all to get up very early as we were sailing into the city mm-hmm. so we could get the best views of the town. Yes. So both sides. Right that are bridged together, right. literally, yep. by the chain bridge. Uh-huh. So it was spectacular, and yep. it was really worth getting up early. Yep. It was great. And what what comes to mind when you think of Hungary? Oh, well, it's uh, it was a you know beautiful city. Yep. Uh, one side, you know, the Buddhist side's up on a hill, kind of overlooking Pest. And <laughs> Pest right. is kind of like the more um, kind of work-a-day Mm-hmm. part of the city right uh so the history's up up on the hills and uh the people are kind of you know down below that's right that, yeah. that's a, a a great description yep. synopsis the reader's digest there you go of budapest also some people will think of goulash yes paprika uh-huh. the gabor sisters i always think about the gabor sisters <laughs> <laughs> I, and i think uh baby boomers and above yeah. will will relate more to that yeah, yeah, um, right. but if you're not familiar they they were kind of the kardashians yep. of their time uh-huh no more for their celebrity than yeah actual jobs jobs and accomplishments <laughs> right so there were three yep jaja uh-huh magda uh-huh. and ava yes and between them all yep. they had 20 marriages well they had to do something <laughs> they did so i jaja came in at uh nine right magda six uh-huh. Ava, the younger sister, only five. Uh, she was the slacker, I guess. Although she had, she did have a day job. She did have a yeah, day yeah, job, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Budapest. Right. So Budapest is the second bi- biggest city on the Danube. Right. The first one is Vienna. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which we went to yep. as well. A little bit upriver. Right. <laughs> and it is uh, the history is centuries old. Right. But. Budapest came into being more in the late 18th or 19th century, right, late right. 1800s. Mm-hmm. And they were combined of a, a group of different areas, but primarily the towns of Buda and Pest. Right. And they were, it was originally called Pest Buda. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess there was a contest and somebody has to lose. <laughs> and it later became yeah. Budapest, All right. what we call it today. Right. But how would you pronounce Budapest? Well, uh, since I'm not a psychopath, I'd say Budapest. <laughs> Well, you're an English-speaking non-psychopath. All right. Okay. We'll <laughs> okay. go with that. All right. <laughs> because we'll, we pronounce the S sound S. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in Hungary, mm-hmm. they pronounce the S as an S-H. That's just crazy. So you will hear Hungarians say Budapest. Okay. All so right. if you think back to Green Acres. And I, I do that all the time. <laughs> that great TV show. Yeah. When Lisa Douglas yeah. is played by. Ava Gabor. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a. <laughs> <laughs> no. Some people may not know that. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. All right. Okay. So she's she was reminiscing, may have been reminiscing, right. about her hometown Budapest yep. while she was making her famous hot water soup. Yes. <laughs> it was a favorite of Ebb's. Yeah. Okay. Right. So don't don't uh, yeah. 
don't judge too much here. Yeah. You have your Star Trek yeah. references. All right. Let me have the green acres. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sophisticated. <laughs> okay. So, all do right. you have any special memories of Budapest? Well, uh, we we did all the tours and um, and uh, the churches and oh, there was the um, uh, very weirdly aggressive. <laughs> Uh, uh, lady in a babushka, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. Um, the worst sales lady <laughs> I've ever seen trying to, f- she had some shawl or some knitted right, thing. Right, right. She was, uh, you know, kind of like, why don't you buy this? Yes, yes. <laughs> Several times, loudly, and making everyone uncomfortable. So uh, there might have been a, a thing going on. I don't know. Right, that, uh, it, it. It goes back to those yeah. uh, those memories of trips, you, you know, all the museums, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the cathedrals, and yeah. synagogues, and we remember the uh, yeah, yeah. the crazies, of there course. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it might but, have been the high point. I don't know. <laughs> I, and you know what? It was kind of odd because that was the only thing that she was selling. Yeah. <laughs> you thought she might have brought a little bit more to the, the product mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. be that as it may, yeah. so. We spent a lot of time in Buddha. We mm-hmm. spent a little time in Pest. Right, right. And that's where we went to that Cafe Frey. Right. I, mm-hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing yeah. that correctly. F-R-E-I. They're not going to come after us for that. <laughs> no, right. And we also went to that marketplace. Right. The right. the Great Market Hall. Right. And that was a highlight, yeah, I it was. Think. Yeah, there was a lot going on there. There was a lot. It's it's like Eastern Market for those of you who are in yeah. Detroit, but yeah. two levels, yeah. just all kinds of crafts and, yeah. and food, yeah. and we bought a lovely watercolor yeah. from a local artist right. of the town. Yes. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. But we spent a lot of time in Buddha. Mm-hmm. That's the older part with the castles right. and the cathedrals, and my happy place. Yes, the Heron store. Uh-huh. So that was one of three in Budapest, right. and this is where we went. So I thought. I would give a little bit of a backstory mm-hmm. to Heron Porcelain. Yes. So it was started in the early 1820s. Right. By a gentleman named Vince Stengel. Okay. And he named it after the town, Heron, mm-hmm. Hungary. Mm-hmm. And that's about 50 miles from Budapest. Okay. Okay. But he he knew it needed to grow. He didn't have the money. Right. So he sold it to a gentleman named Moore Fisher. Right. I always want to say Max Fisher, yeah. <laughs> but it was more Fisher. Yeah, M-O-R. Right, M-O-R, in 1839. Right. And it really did grow under Moore Fisher. Right. He was, he had this commitment to craftsmanship mm-hmm. and yep. quality, and it, it just took off. Right. So before we talk about where it really hit in England, I thought it might be kind of interesting just to talk quickly about the ownership timeline. Right, right, right. So we start out with Vince mm-hmm, Stingle. Mm-hmm. Then it goes to Moore Fisher. Uh-huh. It's handed down to his sons. Right. Has a number of owners. Mm-hmm. In After World War II, it uh, becomes nationalized. Yeah, I wonder what happened. I think uh, there was some kind of communist takeover of Hungary, perhaps. <laughs> I think you're right. Okay, Iron Curtain and all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah. So, but... Kind of at the end of that tunnel, right. uh-huh. 1992, right. it becomes employee owned, right? Because yeah, yeah, because uh, they had a little revolution after that, and kind of, and here we are today, right? <laughs> and and it was it wasn't uh, it wasn't violent. It, it was, wasn't it was, violent. Yeah, it was. I think they and they kind of uh, you talk to the people, they really kind of pride themselves on how that was handled. I think they called it the Velvet Revolution. Right, and, right. Uh, and so they was just, they were just telling the Russians, you need to leave. Yes, yes. And they left. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I think economics had a big yeah. part of that. Yeah. But it was, it is nice that it, it's yeah. kind of one of those times yeah. in history you go, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, um, under Moore Fisher, yeah. he was the one who had this commitment to high quality yeah. China. Mm-hmm. And, it took off in England yes. when he exhibited some of his porcelain right. at the World Expo. The first World Expo. It was right. a great exposition in London in yep. 1851. Yep. Was that the Crystal Palace thing? It, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. All right. So, yeah, we saw a model yeah. of that right, right, when right. we were at the uh, Albert and Victoria yep. Museum, right? Right. So, one of the great influencers of her time, mm-hmm. again, Queen Victoria, yes. uh-huh. she sees it. Yep. At the exhibition, yep. she's so taken with it, yes. she commissions to have a set made for Windsor Castle. Uh-huh. And it later becomes named 
that later is named right. the Queen Victoria pattern. All right. Okay. That, mm. She she had some influence. She did. All right. She did. So this really took off in yeah. England. Right. All the aristocrats, there. she made it trendy. So they're right. tripping over themselves yeah, to yeah. get hair and porcelain. Right. Okay. But she's not the only family mm-hmm. person that mm-hmm. had a, a pattern named after her. Uh-huh. Also, the Rothschild family. Oh, yeah. They have one called the Rothschild Bird. Okay, that sounds interesting. Okay, let me tell you. Okay. So the Rothschilds were very influential. They were a right. banking family. Uh-huh. And they had done a lot to help Moore expand his business. Right. All the financial support. So right. he named this pattern after them. Mm-hmm. And w- the pattern is inspired by a Rothschild family legend. A true story, perhaps? Maybe. <laughs> I'll let you decide. Okay, all right. So, as the story goes, the Baroness is Baroness Rothschild is right. out in her garden uh-huh. with her pearl necklace. Baronessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and she's out there, and she loses her pearl necklace. How negligent. Unfortunate. Yeah. So, she's a little distraught. Yeah. They don't find it. Until a few days later, Uh the gardener finds it with some unlikely absconders. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He finds the pearl necklace up in a tree branch, Uh and it's surrounded by this flock of squawking birds. Yes. It's their new treasure. Yeah. Arguing over it, I'm sure. Yes. This was quite a prize. Yeah. So, as you can imagine, what was on the pattern of the Rothschild bird? Dead birds? I don't know. (laughs) Well, certainly. Yeah, birds. Birds. <laughs> birds and pearls. Yeah. Okay. So I purchased my teacup, my hair and porcelain teacup right. at Heron in right. Budapest. Right. But it wasn't my first introduction to hair and porcelain. Oh, interesting. Yes. The first introduction I had was in Downton Abbey. <gasps> what? And here's where I'm going to say, mm-hmm. I think you'll appreciate this as a Trekkie. Yeah. Downton Abbey enthusiasts can be as obsessive yes. as Trekkies. Uh, I'd say that's true, yes. Yes, in the minutia, the right. details. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I noticed early on that occasionally mm-hmm. on Cora Crowley's breakfast tray, uh-huh. there would be hair and porcelain Uh-oh. serving. Wow, what an eye. I know. <laughs> so when I went to hair and store i purchased the same so it's a it's called the chinese bouquet pattern okay. rust color okay and i'm gonna just show the teacup here all right you see that yeah isn't that pretty good shot all right and there are different colors this pattern comes in different colors right but if you want to channel your inner cora crowley yes you're going to you have to do the rust there's, color there's no choice right, all right. <laughs> okay so hair and porcelain is it, it's not just old patterns. Right. They retire a lot. They mm-hmm. keep a lot of the popular right. ones going. And yep. then they, they add new ones, but they tweak some old ones. Uh-huh. Keeping it fresh. Keeping it fresh. Yeah. So for Queen Victoria, what right. they did was they tweaked that a little bit in 2011 uh-huh. and called it the Royal Garden. That uh-huh. was for Prince William uh-huh. and Kate Middleton. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. right. And another royal, bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Another royal collector was Princess Di, uh-huh. Princess Diana. Wow. She liked the figurines. Yes. Okay. Now, the figurines, maybe it won't come instantly yeah. to you, your memory, but a lot of people might recognize it when I describe it. Yeah. They're little animals. Oh, They'd yeah. They'd be like little elephants or bunnies. Yes. Yeah. And they have this distinctive fishnet pattern. Oh. Uh, they come in different oh, colors. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So... She was really fond of that, Mm -hmm. and there was a royal household tradition that started Uh where they would place a new hair and porcelain figurine in Princess Di's Christmas stocking. Uh, Isn't that sweet? It is, yeah. I love that tradition. In fact, I was wondering if maybe Mm -hmm. that might be a new gully household Christmas tradition. That's crazy enough to work. A new heron piece in, in uh, Barb's Christmas stocking. Okay, well, we'll we'll check into that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, for those who want to learn a little bit more about hair and porcelain, mm-hmm. I did write an article about that for Tea Time Magazine, okay. and it appears in their May June issue, twenty twenty two. Okay. And I'll just show that to yep. the camera. This one. There we go. Yep. Oh, we know that one. Yes. 
There you go. All right. Okay. So they have some really nice pictures, too, from the Heron Company, and you'll mm-hmm. see the stores and their different patterns. Right. Beautiful. Right. Okay. So also in the article, just a little teaser. Okay. There's another fan, mm-hmm. and I don't want to give away his name, but he'll be back. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I'd like to go back okay. to Budapest. That's a that's a that's a great impression, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> it's, like, it's like he's sitting right across from me. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So how are we doing on time? We're doing great. Oh great. Then we can do our fashion etiquette tip. I was hoping we would get there. All right. <laughs> I know. So in in September, we talked fashion etiquette. Right. We talked about wearing white after Labor Day. Uh-huh. And then we talked about gloves. And I learned something about you that I didn't know before. Yes. That you love gloves. I love, yeah. Of course. <laughs> so I thought today yeah. we would talk about hats. Uh, I love those too. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a favorite hat? Um... Well, I've uh, I've uh, acquired and lost um, uh, those uh, you know what do they call them? Those taxi driver hats, you the know, caps, the caps, the woolen caps. But anyway, I'm I got the last one in Edinburgh. I've hold, held on to it, I think, for a whole year or something like that. So I think we're good. Right. Yeah. So you had your you bought your first one in in Regensburg. No, that was the second. The second one. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> the yeah. first one was in yeah. Edinburgh the yeah. first time. I guess, yeah. So this one. I love them and I lose them. You do. All right. And uh, actually, you got a compliment on the golf course. I did. This I, week. I did. So yeah. it, it, it's, you wear it well. All right. Okay. But when I'm talking hat etiquette, yes. I'm talking primarily maybe a lot of ones that are worn by ladies right. or those who like to wear the really large mm-hmm. hats. Mm-hmm. And that tip. Can mm-hmm. also be found in our book. Yes. Tea, twelve etiquette, twelve etiquette essentials. Right. Formal dining and tea time. Right. And that's where we talked about the gloves. Mm. We also cover hats. Okay. And again, going back to the the broad rim right. hats mm-hmm. with feathers and right. ribbons, uh-huh. highly decorative. Yep. And you may wear these to a concert right. or uh-huh. a derby. Uh huh. And they're lovely. Yeah, they are. But you can keep them on the whole time right. unless you are at some sort of theater event or event where something's yep. people are there to view it yep. mm-hmm. and you're obstructing their view. Uh-huh. So you would take it off yes. and place it in your lap. Nice. So a few weeks ago, we went to see Moulin Rouge with uh-huh. uh, our friends Tim and Joni. Yep. I wasn't wearing a hat. No. I don't think you were. No, wouldn't do it. <laughs> but if I had... Yeah. One of my large brimmed hats, uh-huh. I would have taken it off yes. and put it on my lap. Nice. And then when the show was over, you would throw it up <laughs> in celebration. Like Mary Tyler Moore. That's right. Okay. Okay. So that's the 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 big hats. All right. But what about the fascinators? Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. The fascinators are interesting yep. because they have no function other than to be an adornment. But they need to be seen. An accessory. Right. Some of the hats at least have the pretense of, you know, shading us, protecting us from elements, the, the wind. They're and the, hat adjacent. Well, a fascinator is. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. They have no, no purpose, right, right. really, other than to make you look <laughs> yeah, good. But, yes, yeah, they are hat yeah. adjacent. Right. Good point. Mm-hmm. But so their only function is to, like, add to your outfit. Right. And the same thing follows for the same etiquette follows for the fascinator because we see even though a lot yep. of them are small right some of them go yep. way up out of control right yes so if you're at a theater and you're yep. obstructing someone's view just take it off place yep. it in your lap right a lot of them are fastened by uh, a clip yep or a headband okay and i thought i'd bring one of my favorite okay Uh-oh, fascinators. Here, bringing it out all right look at that can you see that? that's a beauty yes I'm Isn't that pretty. Yes. <laughs> You're what? <laughs> I'm fascinated. <laughs> oh. oh, that's good. Okay. Right. So it's not, it's not that good. It's pretty good. Okay. okay. All right. So do you recall where I purchased that? Um, so it was one of our uh, overseas forays, I think, in uh, London, right? It was. This was at 
Harrods right. in London. And we were there the week before uh, yes. another royal wedding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was Prince Harry yeah. and Meghan Markle. Yes. And the, the atmosphere was a buzz. It was it was electric. It yeah. was it was really it was fun. It was yeah. a real party atmosphere. Yeah, right, right, right. And we were meeting our friends Pam and Quint there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were coming from uh, Italy. Some, some other place. <laughs> some other place. We were coming from yeah. Yeah. Edinburgh, uh, yeah. where you purchased your hat. Yeah. The first one. Yeah. And we met up in London. We were going to take the Queen Mary back home. Right. So we we decided we'd go to Harrods, and we mm-hmm. you went to your favorite place. Yep. Uh, oh, uh, so they're in the basement. They've got all kinds of eateries. I think uh, oysters and, and champagne or something right, like that. Right, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's very fun. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we did that, and then we went down to the the hat section. Right. And I purchased this. Right. Because when we were coming back, the day after we got mm-hmm. back from the cruise, right. I was uh, at the local Fox News yes. station uh-huh. on TV being interviewed by Charlie Langton. Right. And I was there representing a right. Birmingham Tea Room uh-huh. and talking about the wedding. Yeah. So I got to wear that. Yeah. On, it was on great. Television. Yeah. Yes. And I wasn't obstructing anyone's view. No, no. So I could wear it the there. whole time. I didn't Next. need to take it off. All right. Okay. All right. So I think. Uh oh. Is it going to be that time? I think I hear okay. something. Okay. Okay, so we're hearing that tea kettle, Mm -hmm. and it's telling us it's time to wrap up our podcast, Podcast 20. Wow. (laughs) Yes, I know. And we want to thank everybody for listening and tuning in. Yes. want to thank On TV for allowing us to be here. Mm -hmm. Again, we've got some exciting things on the horizon. Yep. And also, for those of you who didn't get to see the, the teacup that I showed today, if you see our most recent blog, right. we talk about glass pumpkins mm-hmm. because of the time of year. Yes. But we also have a picture of that teacup, the heron teacup. Yep. And we'd like to, like, once again, invite folks to write in yep. and give us your suggestions, feedback. We, we love, love that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always do. Okay. All right. And I'd like to say thank you, Chris. Mm-hmm. Arm candy. You're welcome. And... For everyone else, we'd like to say, please, stay tuned. All right, excellent. And we're done.